We have an obligation to try to move this country forward, uh, to make it a more perfect union, to reach a higher level of humanity, to become the one nation uh, under God uh, that we have always professed to be, an undivided nation coming from many. And it's not about politics. It's not about the presidential campaign. This issue has been with us for more than 300 years. It's likely to last a lot longer. Uh, De Tocqueville said, you can abolish slavery, but the bigotry and the bias beneath it is immovable. This conference that you all put together, Race and Reconciliation, I have to be honest, I am overwhelmed with emotion, with everything. I heard the dynamic perspectives. Oh my gosh, it was an extraordinary experience and I just want to share it with everyone. Tell us about how this vision was born. Well, I guess it's a conversation, Latoya, that I wanted to have uh, for a very long time. Ever since my mother, uh, when she was just out of her teens, told me when I was seven years old, as we were coming out of a diner in Indianapolis, Indiana, that we wouldn't be served. And I asked her why, and she said it was because we were colored. And she told me then, this, this young woman, this young mother had to tell her seven-year-old child that there were people in the world who wouldn't like her because she was colored. And I never forgot that conversation. That's indelible in my mind and my psyche. And ever since, I've been wanting to talk to other Americans, white Americans, and ask them how they feel about race and who was their teacher, because we didn't get a textbook or a handbook on race. But we all in America seem to know our place when it comes to race. So this is an outgrowth of that conversation. I only wish my mother were alive to see it uh, come to this hopefully not conclusion, but to this part. And uh, we had people from all over, I would say the world, certainly the world of academia and publishing, activists, uh, actors, uh, Academy Award winning actor, Luke Gossett stayed with us for two days, and best-selling authors were here like Deepak Chopra and Rick, Rick Patterson and Jay Winnick. And uh, we just had a, a great diversity, not only in race, but in backgrounds and interests come together and see that we had like minds on this issue. We must do something to, if we can't eradicate racism, we certainly have an obligation to attack it. I think our national security, this great nation's national security depends on it. And from that standpoint, Secretary Cohen, talk a little bit about what you learned here at this conference and what is the greatest accomplishment that came from this conference in your opinion? We like uh, to use the word enlightenment or illumination. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of the, uh, the books that Janet and I have read um, really uh, calls us into question in terms of illumination, uh, the illumination of everything. And what we want to do is to shine a light on the things that really are most troublesome and challenging uh, to us as a society and as a people. Mm -hmm. And so to listen to the great minds who were in this conference, uh, and most impressive is to listen to the young minds mm -hmm. who were at this conference yes. and the people who are going to carry the torch forward. They are brilliant, they are dedicated, they're idealistic, and they are activists. They yes. are going to move. And so for me, uh, other than Janet's play, mm -hmm. which was perhaps uh, the most emotional moment uh, of the two days, uh, to see these two young actors uh, bring to life her words on the, 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 page that she, the pages that she's written, uh, it uh, brought tears to my eyes, as it did to many in the audience, yes. because those two young people, Anne Frank and Emma Till, came to life. Uh, and uh, the lesson of their lives, mm -hmm. that hate kills, mm -hmm. and that love or the belief in the goodness of people yeah. ultimately will save us, that's a message we want to get out mm -hmm. uh, to the rest of the world. And, and that message, uh, Anne Frank's lovely faith in believing yes. in the goodness of people, inspired me in my darkest hours because I first learned of her when I was 15. I read her diary and saw the film. And uh, Emmett, Emmett would be the same age as I if he hadn't been murdered. And I learned of him and his death showed me uh, seven years after my mother told me what my country thought of me, to see him murdered with impunity and to see the murderers go free and sell their story to a national magazine. But it is Anne Frank who believed in the goodness of people. And it was at this conference that we didn't speak to just the black people, just the white people. We spoke to those good people. 
and uh, we reconciled some things. We wanted to reconcile our country's history because unless we all know all of the history, we can't acknowledge what's happening now. So we decided to, to speak and to listen and, and hopefully to heal and in the reconciling of those differences, differences like uh, our founding. Um, Thomas Jefferson had a principle that he wrote out in one hand and in the other hand he held slaves. Mm -hmm. We have to reconcile that principle with that practice. And we have to reconcile with people who believe affirmative action is depriving them of something and the other people who feel white earned privilege is depriving them of something. So we have to reconcile that. And I think we did a lot of that. We, we, we took a giant step today and, and yesterday. You most certainly did. And as I stated, I'm overwhelmed with emotion myself. And I tell you, I'm encouraged by what I heard here today in regards to reconciling. But there are some issues that we're still working on as we know and working through. And one thing I'd like to ask both of you all, um, and it's a, it's a question that somewhat frustrates me and makes me fearful, to be mm -hmm. quite frank with you. Um, we look at Senator Obama right now, and you talked about how the good people mm -hmm. helped him clinch the Democratic mm -hmm. nomination, not just the black people, but the good people of this country. That's right. My fear is, if Senator Obama is elected president, will the country and the world say, well, you can't cry racism anymore because mm -hmm. we gave you one. And my fear is also, if Senator Obama is not elected, does the conversation about race and reconciliation and the voices that we're hearing on all of the major networks right now, do they continue or do they say, well, we don't need that perspective anymore because he's not the president. He goes back to the Senate and his business as usual. Whether he's elected or not, the discussion about race and racism will go on. Uh, electing one uh, black person to the President of the United States is not going to eliminate what takes place on the ground uh, in reality for millions of people mm -hmm. every day. Uh, hopefully it will help change some attitudes uh, in the event that uh, he is elected. Certainly uh, young black men and boys will look up and say, if he can do that, I can do mm -hmm. that. Much as we heard today from uh, one of our uh, panelists saying when she saw Secretary Rice, uh, become Secretary of State, said, so now I can be uh, mm -hmm. Secretary of yes. State. So that has an aspirational, uh, an inspirational quality to it all. But uh, assuming he's not elected, then this debate, dialogue, conversation uh, is going to continue because race is going to be, con going to be with us mm -hmm. and racism will be with us uh, for a long time to come. We're hoping we can take uh, a step, hopefully a giant step, mm -hmm. but even a small step uh, to, uh, to try to bring out the best in who we are. Uh, to put the spirituality uh, into mm -hmm. it, to say, come as uh, close to godliness mm -hmm. as we can, uh, and that is uh, the power of love. Well, I think, uh, I, and I agree with Bill, uh, if uh, Senator Obama becomes president, that's what it will become, president, mm -hmm. not the Wizard of Oz. You okay. know, he's not going to wave a magic wand and eradicate 350 years of history, perversity of racism. No one should expect that of him to do that. We, the people, have to do that. Uh, hopefully we can support him in his policies and his policies will be uh, the kind that will enable us to support him to do that. But racism, sadly, is a part of the American fabric. I don't want to say DNA. I don't want to believe it's that indelible. I think we can win this. Uh, we probably won't win it in our lifetime, but we have an obligation to attack it. Um, we know that people say sometimes, well, get over it. You know, what are you black people talking about? I didn't have any slaves. Well, they didn't have any slaves and I wasn't a slave, but we're in the same boat now and we all have an obligation to take it from here to a higher enlightenment. <laughs>